FSD. Does this term rings a bell? A buzzword going around in the market nowadays. Let's understand in this video the company's expectations from a full stack developer. So what do you mean by full stack development? Full stack development involves a wide range of technology stack that a full stack developer should be aware and depending upon the number of years of experience should have the expertise in the scene. It basically involves front end development, back end development, database developer, DevOps, yes development and operations team work together and cloud computing so any of the cloud service providers that you have in the market and yes data structures and algorithm so the emphasis is given on dsa based on the years of experience that you have in the market let's understand each and every technology stack in depth when you talk about front end development the technologies that are involved are html css that are basically used to design a web page JavaScript to interact with the web page, front end frameworks that brings in an ease to the developers to create web applications, mobile based applications so that the user can interact using their mobile devices, user experience very very important to have the design of your application based on the user's choice and last but not the least indeed user interface design. Now when we talk about HTML and CSS, I would suggest if you are learning HTML, please focus on HTML5, so socket programming, geolocation APIs, then you have the various semantic elements in HTML, yes the meta tag is very very important, the search engine optimizations that uses the meta tag, the screen readers, so on and so forth. Again there are various input tags, attributes that's available form elements so make sure you are aware about all of these when you are studying about html5 css3 brings in lots of new features to add on the styles to your web pages without involving a single line of javascript code where you can basically style your web pages you add animations transitions provide hover effects and so on and so forth it is very tedious to design a web page using plain CSS. That's where the bootstrap library comes into picture because it provides you with creating a responsive web application. Now when I say responsive, it doesn't mean when you zoom in and zoom out or when you increase and decrease the size of your screen, the element should be placed automatically. The images should scale in, scale out. Responsive is more to that. Responsiveness is browser compatibility operating system compatibility, device compatibility, uh, again, again the colors and fonts are adjustable according to the user's resolution and the graphics of the user device. Last but not the least, you need to be able to create reusable styles. That's where the preprocessors comes into picture. There are many others, I have just pinpointed two that is SAS and LESS which are most widely used in the markets. This is about the front end libraries that is HTML and CSS. To ease your work as a front end developers, then you have JavaScript which brings in the programming basics. So when you say you know JavaScript library, make sure you are well aware about the basics of JavaScript programming that basically involves a differentiation between null, NAN, undefined, there's a difference in the equality operators. There's a difference how the functions work in JavaScript. There are different types of functions. IIFEs, make sure you understand what are closures in JavaScript. Very, very important because the questions revolved around the functions. Then you have function prototyping, object oriented in JavaScript. Understand how you can add more functions to the existing objects that is math, date, string, number, arrays, JSON, make sure you are aware about all these concepts. Also advanced JavaScript, so if you are working with React, Angular, or Vue.js, it's very important that you understand the ES6 syntax 
which brings in object literals, prototyping, spread operator, rest operator and so on. Uh, in the description I will be providing you with the reference links from where you can learn or read more about these concepts. Last but not the least, JavaScript has to communicate with the server. So, you definitely, definitely need to understand about what is a JAX, what principles, concepts goes behind, the promise object which is a new concept available which is a wrapper around the AJAX APIs and definitely should know about observables. Then you have the front end frameworks which are built over JavaScript library which involves Angular which, which comes under the mean stack, React that comes under the MERN stack, Vue.js that comes under the MEVN stack. What is MEN? So, A is Angular, R is React, V is Vue and M is MongoDB, E is for the express uh, server or express framework that you are going to use to create the REST APIs to communicate with the MongoDB database. Then you have Angular React view in the front end which is going to communicate with the express framework which in turn communicates with the MongoDB and to execute express on the server side you have the Node.js runtime environment. Coming to the mobile based applications, if you are creating mobile apps, you may be targeting the Android users. So, Android mobile apps, iPhone users, iOS, Objective-C, Swift as a programming language. With Android, you may be learning Java, Kotlin, Groovy. Then we have React Native, which again provides you with the flexibility of creating applications for any of the mobile device, Android or iOS. Flutter which provides you with the cross platform where you can create mobile based applications as well as web based applications. So, I can say Flutter provides you for creating hybrid applications and same goes with the Ionic framework. User experience basically talks about uh, it has to be customer centric. So, uh, you should know about what is convenient to the users. So, for example, if I have a mobile device and if suppose a call is coming will the left swipe, right swipe, up swipe, down swipe, whether the delete button should be on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen, what is much more user friendly, what is much more advantageous to the users, you, it, it should have an ease of interaction. Um, yes, it also talks a lot about brand, branding, the font you are using, the, uh, the color, the styles, the material designs that you are using, be up to date with the market, what colors are going on, whether you, you should use soothing colors, soft colors or you should use bold colors depending upon the kind of applications or website you are creating. UX is more than designing a web application or a mobile app. It's more, uh, it's, it speaks more about customer satisfaction. You are giving users something more than expected. So, basically it talks about the three things, why, what and how. So, why do you want to add a functionality, what is the motivation behind it and what values it brings on. When you talk about what, so what functionality you are going to add or what features it is going to bring in and how you are going to make it available, how it is going to be accessible to the users and what is the aesthetics, aesthetics behind it. When you talk about user interface, it is more about the layout, the designing, what goes where, how many clicks will be there to go to a certain functionality. Suppose I want to search for a list of something. So, how many clicks I have to do? How many fields I have to enter? Uh, are you giving me autocomplete features or not? So, all those things goes under the user interface. It has to be responsive. We spoke about what is responsiveness in the uh, previous slides about bootstrap library. Um, how In how many less clicks a user is able to reach to a certain functionality? It has to be user centric. So, talk about gestures, touch based, zoom in, zoom out, uh, maybe you know orientation. So, that is all talks about the gesture based features that you bring in. Um, biometric identification, face recognitions, you talk about uh, artificial intelligence driven, it is so much around right and you can actually bring in so many functionalities and features when you integrate artificial intelligence into your applications and definitely augmented reality if that is what your application provides with. Uh, that is something with respect to if you want to be a front end developer. Uh, back end development involves again two areas, 
server side and the ORM framework. When we talk about the server side development, we have Java, Python, Node, Ruby, C Sharp, PHP. We talk about creating web services and a microservice architecture. When we talk about Java, if you are someone who likes or interested in Java, you should be aware about servlets, JSP, Spring and Spring Boot framework, which are very commonly used to create server side applications. If we talk about Python, you should be aware about Django, Cherry Pie, Flask. Uh, Node.js, if you're talking about as a server side application, then Express Framework, Meteor, Socket.io. Ruby, then you must be aware about Ruby on Rails framework or Cuba or Hanami. C Sharp, then it's .NET, ASP.NET. If, it, if we talk about PHP, then you might be aware about Laravel framework or Symfony or Zend. Uh, web services are of two types, that is SOAP based web services and REST based APIs. More which one is used is REST based APIs because of the ease of creating, consuming and creating. At the same time, it's also mobile friendly. And last but not the least, microservice architecture. Uh, don't go with microservices if you're not creating a complex application, which you require to be scale across geographical locations. If you have lakhs and lakhs customer hits on your applications, don't go for microservice architecture. But then if it's a complex application, yes, you should be aware about microservices. ORM frameworks basically allows you to communicate with database and they are a wrapper about uh, they are a wrapper around lots of uh, queries that you write to communicate with database so we talk about java there's an hibernate orm framework sql alchemy for python Mong mongoose for node.js active record if you're talking about ruby ado.net if you're talking about dotnet c sharp and propel if you're talking about php now i know i've given you so many technologies in the stack right i'll talk about it in, in the last. Now, when, when we talk about databases, again, databases divided into two categories. RDBMS, where you have MySQL, Postgre, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, and so on and so forth. Then again, there are no SQL databases, which are Cassandra, Redis, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, and so on. Uh, DevOps, again, is around where a developer team and the operations team work hand in hand to smoothen the production and deployment of your application. It's tedious for the operation teams to wait till the time the developers complete development. It may take around six months and then the operation team takes the application and deploys and at runtime there are issues. So why not all the teams work hand in hand together in the start so that uh, any issues are there, they can, they can be foresighted in the beginning only. So I don't have to wait for the last, my clients don't have to wait for the last. Any issues are there, we are able to handle or tackle in the beginning of it. When we talk about DevOps, there are uh, version control tools, so Git, GitHub, Bucket. Then you have container management tools, Docker, Kubernetes, Mesos. Then you have performance monitoring tools like Prometheus, Dynatrace, AppDynamics. You have deployment and server monitoring tools like Splunk, Datadog, Sensu. Configuration management tools like Chef, Puppet, Ansible. You have CI CD tools, continuous integration, and continuous deployment tools like Bamboo, Jenkins, Travis CI. And lastly, we have cloud computing where you can be aware about either AWS, Microsoft Azure, GCP, or there are other cloud services platforms as well. So this brings us to the end of what is the expectations when you say you are a full stack developer. Now I know that I've given you a variety or the plethora of technologies. I would suggest pick up one stream, Python track, Java track, or PHP, or C sharp, or Ruby, or PHP, any of them. Microservices, web services, databases are something which are common across all these technologies. So whether you create a web app or mobile application using Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, you would be requiring database. If you are creating complex applications, you would be requiring microservice architecture. And if you are creating REST APIs, we're talking about web services. So web services, microservices, and databases are common across all the technologies. 
again i would just want to end this video by saying please focus on the concepts please focus on understanding so if you're learning python understand if you're creating a variable a equals to 10 what does that mean if you are using a for loop what does that mean it's very important to understand the concepts because that will help you to transition to any new programming language or any other programming language so that's from my side what do you understand by full stack developer if you liked it please ping in the comment section below and do like share and subscribe the videos if you think it might be advantageous for someone else as well till then Happy learning, take care and bye-bye.